on a daily basis, I'll be walking down the hallway and you'll hear someone tapping on the other side of the glass to come in, um, answer a question, have a quick chat, uh, set up a meeting. I value those sorts of interactions from the impromptu meeting in the hallway or through a glass wall uh, to the more formal settings. I think interacting across labs, it always comes with the ability to share perspective and, and often to share a different perspective than our lab takes on a certain technique or a certain question. And I think that's something that's much harder to achieve when it's contained within a single lab. I try to spend uh, most of the morning sort of catching up with the people in my lab, talking about recent experiments that we've done or quite often, maybe to their consternation, I've had some idea the previous night or in the shower that I want to run by them to modify the experiment or to slightly adjust the way we're thinking about our problems. As part of our small group, a lot of our meetings, of course, happen one-on-one -on -one, uh, where I'm sort of discussing the details of the project with uh, someone in the group. And then on a semi-regular basis, um, we get together as a group and people will present some of their individual research. I find it a, pretty, a particularly useful time where we can get a, a different perspective from uh, another person in the lab. Often the combination of multiple perspectives or sitting together as a small group can be a really useful way to um, hash out a new idea or uh, help decide on the sort of next experiment within a project. In my lab, we, we really focus on sort of designing a uh, complicated behavioral paradigms where we can assess what uh, mammals, in our case mice, know about the world, how fast they can learn about the world. We ask a mouse to do really simple things, something like playing a video game. We ask them to push on buttons and levers, and we also uh, focus our microscopes at the brains of mice uh, and can directly observe the activity in the brain while they're performing these behaviors. We take the movement of the mouse in real time, and we measure that together with um, activity of a number of locations within the brain in real time. The details of the movement of the mouse actually tell us a lot about not just what he can do, but what he's trying to do. And so from something like a uh, hundred different uh, locations within the brain, we can observe the electrical activity at uh, a thousand observations per second. So every millisecond we can get an idea of what's going on in the brain and how that activity is organized across large groups of neurons. In some sense every day is an experiment from beginning to end. You get to see the data roll off in real time while you're observing the behavior of mice and we will often try to, to use that and try to see what's going on in the details, maybe things we've missed in the analysis, which is incidentally a big part of why I like doing my own experiments. Um, there's really no substitute for seeing the data come off yourself. I can really get in and do my own project and manage not just the sort of asking the questions, but conducting the experiments, running the analysis, and you know, ultimately bearing the fruits of all that labor. I didn't really sort of fully understand some of the challenges of, of sort of jumping in and running my own research as a fellow. It certainly would have been less uh, risky on my part to, to join a, a larger lab at a university. In coming here though, I felt that I had enough of a vision of what I wanted to do and I felt that I had my own perspective on how we wanted to address these questions that I thought it was worth the risk essentially to see whether that vision and that perspective um, could pay off. I knew um, there would sort of be no questions asked. I could, I could set it up and I could try something different. The only question would be whether I could do it.